a week tonight, 6 till 7. Those are some programmes coming up over Christmas on BRMB from the Sports Department. Keith, hello. Hello there. Uh, yes, Keith. Yes, um, last, last Sunday again, um, yeah. apart from the penalties, uh, the full-back for Swindon, the uh, number five, Calderwood. Yes. Um, the, the Albion fans were oh, very, very incensed that by was terrible, something wasn't it? That, that happened. Yeah. And, um, yeah. It really was disgusting, one of the worst decisions I'd ever seen. Yeah, the guy went down poleaxed and, uh, and and looked for a sending off, didn't he? And I mean, he, to... should have, he should have been sent off for him, himself. For he that. should have been sent off himself, or at least booked, yes. Uh, you're quite right. And the Albion fans spotted it and gave him stick all the way through, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, and that, that's another, that's a terrible part of the game, when players do that. Now, I, I must admit, I didn't see the actual foul uh, on him, or alleged foul on him. Did you see it, Tom Ross? This is interesting. Wasn't he trying to buy a sending off? Yes. Exactly. Exactly my point about the penalties. Well, that's that's terrible. That's that's exactly dishonest. my point. It is. Both are dishonest in their own no, way. No, you don't understand the. But I did see the incident, and the foul was nothing like it. And the referee should have sent off the Swindon man without any booking or anything. Should have just sent him off because there's no room in the game for people like that. Yeah, yeah. In one case, a player by dishonesty is trying to get another player sent off. In the penalty situation, by skill and pace, you by are deceit. trying to win an advantage for your team. By devious means. Not deceit, if you're brought down in the box, it's a penalty. That's the rules of the game. I accept that, but not to go looking to be brought down. What? That's not the spirit of the game. Of course it is. Is it? Yes, of course it is, to, to score goals. Am I that naive? The spirit of, yeah, you are. The spirit of the game is to score goals. That is the spirit of the game. No, to score goals. But it's, what a, what's wrong with the sporting aspect? Have we lost all sense of, have we lost that? Mm, yeah. Let's go to Chris. I'll find people with things like bad flag calling, bad penalties. You just take an incentive out of taking a risk, which is what the yeah, game to. I don't. I, I want to talk about what you would find players for. And you've mentioned one thing there, Chris, which I would find a player for if he takes a foul throw. Now, nothing incenses me more than seeing a professional football who's paid to earn his living at the not being able to do something within the rules of the game, so basic as take a throw in. Now, if I saw one of my players take a foul throw... I'd find him very, very heavily. Yeah. More than an e more than an ever fine a player for missing a penalty, and I, know, I wouldn't do that. It depends if it's deliberate or not. I mean, everybody who's played football knows you can take a foul throw and not know you've done it sometimes. Yeah, but, but you should know you've done it. Professional... Throw, well, we're, listen, we're, yeah. talk we're talking about human beings here. You're turning them into robots. Don't ever take a foul throw. Don't ever miss a penalty. Don't yeah. it? You're turning them into robots. For goodness sake, it's the thrills and spills, the misses, the near misses, hitting the posts, the sliding tackles. Yeah, no. It's all that that makes the British game. Yeah, yeah, call it thrills, spills, call it sloppiness if you like. I'd call it sloppiness. What it's sloppiness. What? What you foul people for is for callous fouls, professional fouls, well, inciting fans, and yeah. put, get, letting their heads go down. Yeah, and I think the FA and, and, and the PFA and, all, and the referees should be on the ball there. But no referee is going to uh, fine you or whatever <laughs> for, for taking a foul throw. You'll simply give the, the ball away, which is what I would fine a player for. That is sloppiness. On a Sunday, perhaps, it's, 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 it's all blown over with a, a shout of, you know, whatever, at the player, um, concerned. In professional football, giving the ball away is tantamount to treason. Now, you should never do that. And that's the reason I would fine a player for taking a foul throw. Other areas, as I've said, are wearing your socks down by your ankles. And also, in my book, because I'm a neat and tidy person, is for wearing your shirt outside your shorts. I would fine... to do with football. Exactly. Because like, you know, you're an ugly so-and-so, you get fined here because you're ugly. I mean, you know, what you really want to see is you want to see uh, 11 people going on the pitch and taking another team apart and playing really good Exactly. Football. We've got That's what you want to see. It doesn't matter what they look like, what they're dressed in. Well, you I disagree with you. See, I disagree. Ball. We've got enough fear in the game already. The fear of losing, which is turning the game from, from good into indifferent. If you put fear into players so that they don't want to get involved in the game, we're going to get more sterile rubbish than we've already got. That is just my Making point. Conformity just makes life boring. Exactly. Yeah, no, will, will, you stop, will you stop ganging up on me for a minute? I'm just trying to tell you that that is where I would draw the line. On certain technical things, I would find players heavily because technically they should be aware of what they're doing. On instinctive things like taking a penalty or a corner kick or having a shot missed, I would give them a rollicking, but I wouldn't find them. Now, that's the tr that's the kind of line I'm trying to develop here. Your team, George, you're going to have to uh, find great difficulty find someone to take a throw in you. You find anybody to play you're for you. Brain elbows. All right. But also, one, three, five, nine, four, oh, double, one. I mean, it's no use knocking them all away, because mm. it's only just coming, hasn't it? OK. Uh, Tom Ross, your view of Dave Mackay's progress so far? 
I think that uh, basically... Without being at all sycophantic. I think that um, overall I I'm a little bit disappointed. And I think Dave Mackay's disappointed at some of the games that have been thrown away because they should be higher in the table than they are with the, with the, with the squad of players he's got around him. So I'm disappointed in are the way games... Are you saying have... you're disappointed in Dave Mackay? No, I'm, I'm saying that I'm disappointed in the way it's gone. And as the manager, of course, we all know the managers carry the ultimate responsibility. And what I'm saying is, Mackay, he's disappointed. So if he's disappointed, then it's understandable that we're disappointed in what him and his team have achieved. Oh. So Dave Mackay... Dave Mackay, he's a good manager, doing a good job. I like the players he's brought, I like the way he plays the game. I like the way he plays the game. He wants it played. I sometimes wish perhaps he wasn't so football orientated, just a little bit more ruthless and say, look, like the other day when, when they should have put the shutters up and won 1-0, but they, they lost one nil, uh, drew 1-1, one, one, that sort of thing. But uh, he's, he's got his ways and that's his ways and... and it's entertaining football. You see, if he was more ruthless, he'd have Hoppy back in the team straight away, wouldn't he? Well, I'd, ra I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be out... I mean, I've got to be personal. I'd rather be out the, out the third division, not playing quite so attractive football. So you're saying, bring Hoppy in, let's sort him out. I'm saying, let's get out the third division quicker. Any way... The quickest route possible. Any which way you like. Any which way... I see. The one up at half time. It wasn't going to be enough because we are not geared. We are geared to the Dave Mackay, Doncaster Rovers type of boring football. It's never going to get us out of that division. It's no good taking off strikers like poor old Mark Yates okay. just after half time. You can't blame the strikers. Mitchell, but, yeah. are you saying that you think Dave Mackay can do the job but he's not yes. employing the right I'm tactics at the moment? Or are you saying Dave Mackay is not the man? No, what I'm, I agree with your first comment, George. We have got the squad. We've got a super squad. But why do we invite teams to take over our midfield? Mm. What I'm saying to Birmingham City fans, when I sit in the stand, I'm amazed. They sit there, they're quiet, they never utter a word of boredom about uh, the way... Mitchell, the have you play. ever thought, have you ever thought, Mitchell, it might be you out of line, that perhaps they're I'm, not, they're not apathy, they're I'm, not, perhaps they're enjoying what they're watching. Have you ever thought that? I'm, you might not be... Who crowned you king all of a sudden? I'll tell you something, at the end of the season we'll finish ninth, and people say, haven't we done well? No, I ain't saying that. I ex Listen, you heard what I said, I want to get out of that third division, I hate it. Well, but 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 we have played entertaining football. We haven't. We've lacked the killer touch. And I, I take your point about midfield because yeah. we haven't got we haven't got that little bit of um, venom in midfield no, that Hoppy would bring. We haven't got that. And you're absolutely right. Sometimes it's too pretty. But we have played some good football. Now, if we can just and remember, it wasn't his fault that Bailey was injured. It wasn't his fault that Sturridge was injured. He had to change his forward line. I think he's paired his forward line, you know, something like Tom. 13 different times. Yeah, Tom, I think it's his fault that you play Ian Atkins holding hands with our goalkeeper, Martin Thomas, for no reason at all for 67 minutes of the game. What? Let's start, he's Hang on, we, we, we'd lost a few games in a row when he changed it to that system, and all of a sudden we put up the shutters and we stopped losing games and giving away goals. He's the best midfield player we've got, mm. and, and I think we've got enough defensive players to to put in that position as Ian Atkins has done. OK, OK, Mitchell, I don't want to get too deep into tactics. What I, what I think I would like to say is that I would play Hopkins if he's fit, and I would play Sturridge and Bailey as my front two if they're fit every single time. And I think that is a message which I'm sure the Birmingham fans and yourself would agree with. Thanks for your call, Mitchell. Let's go to Johnny. Hello, Johnny. All right? Yes. Up the villa! OK, thank you. Correct. At the moment, Mick on the line. Hello, Mick. Hello, George. Yes. Um, first of all, <coughs> I would like to say on your behalf that you are one of the few people that backed Graham Taylor when, when things were going wrong at the villa. I would say the only person. I would say that you were the only person. And that is why... Excuse me, I've been running. That's why I've got a lot of respect for your judgment. Good man. But I'm a Birmingham supporter, and I fully endorse what that previous caller was saying about the, the defensive boring style of football at Birmingham. Mm. Now, I'd like to ask Tom Ross... If he was at the Fulham game. Yes, I was. Well, the first half against Fulham was probably the worst 45 minutes of football I've ever seen. Disappointing. In fact, so, to such an extent that they were booed off the off the pitch. And I wasn't the only one that was booing. The whole of the cot was booing. I was sitting behind the railway end. And an old man turned around to me and he said, you shouldn't barrack the players. And I said, if I don't barrack them, they might think we're enjoying this. It was so bad. And the old man says, what you should do is write and complain to the manager. 
Well, I'm complaining now over BRMB. Well, fine, but you're, you're isolating a game. Oh. This is a this is this is a half-term report. That's what we're looking at tonight. And if you're saying the Fulham game was awful, it was, and the players know it, and everybody else knows it. They still had chances to win that thing, but they also, had, I mean, they could have given it away as well, of course. But well, it, it was so blatantly obvious when Sturridge and Bailey came on. The difference was chalk. And Did you go to Notts County? Pardon? Did you go to Notts County? Notts County, no. They were brilliant. Well, I know they got beat, but they played ever so well. Well, I'm talking about the games at St Andrews this season. Uh, the first five games we won, and we won nice and easily. Plenty of goals. First time we've for years we scored four goals. Can I just butt in here for a minute? Because, you know, I'm trying to sit still and, and listen to this, but uh, I've got to say that for Tom to say, did you go to Notts County and they were brilliant yes. and we lost, yes. is a total travesty. Exactly of what he was saying five minutes ago about any which way you can no, getting out of the third no, division. But I was replying, hang on, I, I was won't replying. stand for that kind of argument hang on, I was used re- against a man who was trying to make a point Let me make by a point, saying then. something which was a total reversal of what no, has gone before. No, yeah, that's unfair. It doesn't unfair. matter. That it does is not unfair. matter that if is they played well against Notts County and lost. No, Not that is unfair. We're either going to talk about winning and losing or we're going to talk about how, how good and attractive football they're playing. You can't have it both ways. They played ever so... Att- and I said, I want them out that division vision any which way but loose and what I'm saying is they went to Notts County and played ever so well and lost played very well because this gentleman and a few of the others have been saying they've been playing boring football my point was at Notts County they weren't boring but they lost I'd rather they were very boring and won right because I want them out the third division but it seems to me these days that you know Blues fans and I, I have to be honest most Blues fans you speak to and you've had them on after games on on Saturday night saying how well Birmingham City are playing and how entertaining they're being now you, you can't please all the people all the time by the sound of it. What right. Birmingham City lack is the killer instinct. Can I, can I butt in, please? Mm. Uh, when things are frittered away, it appears to me Blues are not going to make that playoff place or promotion place this season. Okay. It appears to me now. I'll tell you, I'll, 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 I'd I'll, like to know why. I'll stick my wages on it. I'll stick my wages they make the playoffs. How much wages? Well, a a month's salary that we make. Ma- well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, this is really the sort of support the club need at this time. I mean, I was disappointed as anybody, and I did say at the start, I mean, don't get it wrong, I said at the start I was disappointed because I thought they should have been far b- higher up the table and running away. I think the squad they've got, they should be running away with that blessed division, but they lack that ruthless touch, that killer instinct. And, and I don't think the strikers have got it, you know. I don't think Sturridge and, and Bailey have got that. They're good players and talented players, and they'll put you the ball in there. They haven't got that killer instinct. Sturridge is a very, very, very good talented, player. very good player well, indeed. I hope we keep him. And okay, so do okay, I. Okay, don't get too too much deep. You, you're you're saying a month's salary blues will make the playoffs. Absolutely, you're that, you're that confident. Okay, I might just hold you that. Thanks for your call, Mick. J- Tomorrow, what Dave's first choice is. Thanks for your call. Let's go to Gary. Hello, Gary. Hello. Yes. Listen, what I want to know is why is it we have got the best manager in the first division? Don't tell me to listen. Don't ever tell me to listen. I'm sat here listening to you. Don't tell me to listen. While they are languishing where they are in the second division, and if they go out of the FA Cup tomorrow, I will not remit, I will not let up in my, if you like, criticism of what's going on at the Albion, because they are a big club, and I expect better things of the Albion. Now, I'm sorry if that's long-winded, I'm sorry if that has lost you uh, along the way, I hope you've kept up with me, because those are my views. Whoa. George Gavin, BRMB Sports. Paul, Alwyn, Mark and Steve on the way to you. First of all, Paul, can, hello. Can I just make a step? No, please? Paul, hello. Bring back Sonny Butler. OK, thank you, Paul. Can I make a point? Yes, a can. very important point. How on earth can you class what Graham Taylor's done with Kenny Doglish? Be honest. I found that amazing. Kenny Doglish has won things. And with all respect to Graham, who I like very much, and is doing well at that, he's not won anything yet. So let's be serious about things. But also this this blues this blues thing. It's a better ru- manager than Kenny Dalglish. Rubbish. <laughs> better. Rubbish. This thing that's bothering me is is this blues thing. You know Birmingham City and I, and I'm not knocking the strikers. I'm talking about killer instinct. They're talented players, but they're just like that killer instinct. You've said that. I want I want to make that absolutely clear. There's no criticism of any of the players. It's, it's clear. A killer instinct. So you're saying they're softies. And also yeah, another thing you missed. They play five at the back. They don't. They play three at the back and the two fullbacks get forward. Are you the saying? same as Villa. You don't criticise Villa for playing five at the back. You say they play three at the back and two wingers. Are you saying they're soft? 
No, I'm not saying soft. They don't twist my words. What I'm saying is they lack that ruthlessness. They play in good, attractive football, and you can instill that in them. And Dave Mackay and Bobby Ferguson can instill that killer touch into them. I know they can. And play good football. And that's why I've staked a month's wages on it. Phew, we'll all be rich then, won't we, if we win that bet? Uh, Alwyn, hello, brother, but let's hope they can do it and pull themselves yeah. out. Anyway, uh, thank you for the call. Remember what I say, uh, Taylor will be England manager. And uh, all the best to my friends down there in the Cotswolds. Yeah. Thanks very much, George. You thank you for your call. You mustn't forget either, you know, that the, of all clubs, I can even think of any cl- other club in the first, second, third or fourth division that's had the injury problems that Brian Tolbert Don't had to contend with. Don't ever talk to me about injury problems. Don't oh, ever mention injury Injury problems. Because it doesn't suit you. No, it doesn't, it suit, doesn't you. suit you. Exactly. Well, it's got to suit you. It's a fact. It you keep talking about me. facts. Talk about facts. Whingers, moaners, talk Jonas, about facts. Those are the people talk who talk about, about injuries. Facts. Well, what are the facts? Get it. The facts are that he's a had an injury problem. The job is to overcome those kind of problems. The, in the normal run of the things. But when it, when it becomes horrendous, the injury problem. Don't care. Then... Don't care. If they had 25 on stretchers in hospital, wouldn't matter to me. The man just fought. Would you say that at Villa Park? Yep. No, you wouldn't. Yes, oh, of course I would. You never, ever should use injuries at any time but in it's football. It's a fact. It's not, it's not an excuse. excuse. It's a reason. No, a reason. No, 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 no. Well, I think, I think Brian Talbot's had the worst injury problem. You might not like yeah, it. You're right. He's had no, the worst no, injury problem. No, I'm and sure I think, you're right. Yeah, I think you have to take that into I'm account. I'm sure you're take right. Take it into account. I'm then. sure. No, I won't. I never will ever take injuries into account. You start doing that, and you start making excuses. It's like blaming the referee. Hang on, it's hang like... on a minute. Last Saturday afternoon, when we heard about Kent Nielsen's injury, you were saying that could affect Villa. And it... I mean, you can't have it one way and not the other. Never. No, no. It's up to Villa to sort it out in the transfer market if need be. But he might be fit again tomorrow, so there may be problem. They might have a youngster in the team, Andy Coleman or someone who could come in. To... I don't know. It isn't my job to sort out Villa's problems. It isn't my job to sort out the Albion's problems. If they but have... you've got to understand them. No, if they have an horrendous injury list, that is Brian Talbot's problem. End of story. He's paid a lot of money to sort that out, to either have players in the reserves or buy players... Well, he can't buy players? It's up to him. It's his no, problem. he can't no, buy it's players? it's his problem. That's the pro- his problem. No, it is, of course it's his problem. Yeah. But some problems are insoluble. You get it's the same as you walk in the dressing room after the, after the game. You've just been beaten three one. The referee wasn't he terrible? Oh, that's a different thing. You can't no, it's whinging. That. I will not stand for no, whinging. The referee is is that's whinging. The referee, the lines so should be given penalty, but not injuries because that's a fact. No, it's whinging. Let's go. To... I think you mentioned you mentioned George that da- before a couple of calls ago the daily wasn't quite ready for England yet. I think we've got into that way in the Midlands. No, he's not quite ready for the England. Why the heck not? He's in the team that's second in the first division. No. Now, and he's beginning, he's added the one thing that was missing from his game. Slow trigger. No, he's added the, no, forget that, forget that, forget that. Don't rush ahead of yourself. Slow down a bit. He's Forget not that. yet a John He's Barnes. He's added the one thing. The question was, John Who? Barnes or Tony John Daly? John Barnes is part of an England team that isn't doing any good, for goodness got sake. got to go for John Barnes over, <laughs> at the moment over Tony Daly. Da- no. Well, I think, I think you've, been, you, you've been clouded by a few things about, about John Barnes. Daly is the man in form. I'm not saying John Barnes isn't, but there's, there must be room for both of them, perhaps. John Barnes on the left, Daly on the right. Let's just think for a minute. Because Daly's added the one thing that was missing in all the years gone by. He's doing it week in and week out now. And, and as one caller rightly said, he's beginning to defend as well. That's great news. And, and I was thinking, like you said, no, he's not ready for England. Why not? We're a bit too shy in coming forward here in the Midlands. Why not? Because John Barnes, at the moment, is a John better all John Barnes plays player. the other side. You can't have Barnes and Daly in Why the not? same team. Terrorise them. You can't do it. Well, drop Barnes then. Oh two one three five nine. Season or a season ago, Villa would have been beaten that day, because Blackburn were the better side on that day. Mm. They've but, learned, but they they're, don't they're, lie down. A, don't tell me about Villa. They're a better team. They're a better team now. Well, I can't I tell you about Villa? But to win the league is what we're talking now. I've gone past that point now. I've gone past the point of making Villa a good team or helping to make Villa or telling you about Villa being a good team and a good manager. I've gone past that point now. Right? That's history to me. I never look back. I never go back. I go forward. Hang on. Five weeks ago, I said Villa could win the league. You said no. I said I wasn't ready to say yet. Are you now, ready to say now? I'm ready to oh. say now they can win the league. But it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's ruthless out there. They give you nothing. Go to Anfield. What do they give you? A cup of tea. That's all you get. You get nothing in this life. You have to work and be ruthless and grasp for it. 
That doesn't mean cheating, that just means being hard. Now Villa, to my mind, have not got that yet. That's the next stage. We've got them into third, second place in the table. That's all, that's fine. But as I've said, the little minnows can get that far. The good teams go on and grasp it and grab it. The second place with a game in hand. Grab it. Game in hand. You've got to grab it. Now that's, that, that's the next stage for Villa. Grabbing it and wanting to grab it and holding on to it. Let me tell you, that is hard to do. Ian. Well, you know, can I, I make a very important point? What? What is wrong with you and the Villa fans? They're second in the table with a game in hand. They're in the cup and everything else. The, the Zenith, they've got a chance of going to Wembley. They're doing so well, and yet you're finding fault. I helped to get them there. Now, I'm but not why are you hey, finding because, fault? Because, I'll tell you why, because, I'll tell you why. Because I am not one for sitting on my laurels and saying, They're great. doing okay. Well, now, yeah, yeah, and you would sit there, you would sit there and say, Great, smashing. Now, you would sit on your laurels. I will not do that. Villa have got nowhere yet. They may also be... Villa have, have already bought Grab some it. pride. Grab it! If they don't want to go and grab it, then there's nothing, there's nothing. There's nothing for second place. They've already there's brought no some pride back to the Midlands. Exactly. But I don't want pride. Let's want take medals. it a step at a time. I want a medal. You don't get a medal for second place. You don't get one anyway. Steve. It's a game, you know what I mean? They'll give them a very good game indeed. Aston Villa will beat Port Vale four or more nil. You because I tell, Let me tell you why. Port Vale are struggling in their division. They've had, hang on, they've, they've had their big game. That was a derby, the big, the big, almost a local derby match for them. They've had their big game now. They will be turned over by Aston Villa. It's the likes of you who wins nothing in football. It's people like you who are happy with what you've got and you'll win nothing. You will, you, if you were a manager, you would win nothing. I understand nothing. that Port Vale have had their big game against Derby. They've had their Wembley. They will be fodder you for Aston never, Villa. Oh, well, there, it's exactly, you're exactly specifying now why you'd get nowhere in football. I tell you, I'm telling you. We'll I know, see. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I know you don't like me telling you, but I, 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 I'm telling you. Four or five nil. At least. All right, OK. I've made a note. Right, Good. so... Uh, Rubbish there. Yeah. I think you've got to keep fighting else. We're not going to get anywhere. Ex the exactly. moment you relax, I think oh, that, that's you, you, when you steady I up. I didn't say relax. You're so right. I didn't Could say finish. relax. Could just I finish. didn't say relax. Quote me if you want, but don't. I didn't say relax. I said that... No, but you were saying that Villa were there almost. No, you know? I didn't say that. I said we're that... nowhere near there. No, I never said that. I said let's not knock them because you Villa fans are always knocking your team. Yeah, they've, got a, the they've got a game in... Hang on, you've got a game in hand. The players are listening to this. You've got a game in hand. On the, the top team. You can go top with that game in hand. We need players. We still need a We're all that you've got to progress. You can't sit still. Like you say, we've got to keep, we've got to keep going now. Now's the time that we should be fighting harder than yeah. ever. If you want to sit back now and rest on your laurels, that's fine, like yeah. Tom. That's well, fine. That's what the blues fans oh, do. That's yeah. I didn't say rest on the your laurels. No, that's fine. No, no, no that is unfair. Can I just, that's fine. That's fine. If you want to do like sit on your laurels, that's, that's fine. That's okay. That's all right. What you do, you end up third, fourth, or fifth in the table, and you sit back and you say, Ooh, and half a bad season, that one. We finished 20th or whatever last year. Now we've finished... Yeah, we've had a good season, lads. We got to the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and we finished third, fourth or fifth in the table. That's not a bad season. Rubbish! Rubbish. Two, Rubbish. Two, things. two things. I didn't say that. I'm, I've always advocated buying when you're winning. That is not the point. All I'm saying is, for God's sake, don't start knocking your team. But the other thing, the other thing that boards for them that um, Villa's success last time was the McNaught evans partnership was the, the backbone of it. Mm. And they've got that very similar now. There's a lot of similarities with AD, AD1 and uh, now. Yeah, but you can't look back. I mean, you can't say... It's, I'm it's making a, a comparison. I'm not looking back. You are. You, you, you're looking over your shoulder. You can't say it's successful now because it resembles something ten years ago. No, you That's know a meaningless what, you know comment. No, it's a what, meaningless no, comment. No, you know what I'm trying to say? is They've got a backbone now. Mm. And he's developed. He's come on Mountfield. I mean, they were at his throat last year, but with Nielsen... He's come on and looks a very good player mm. indeed. OK, Russell, thanks for the good season they've had. We don't want that. We want to win something and get a medal. That's the important thing. And if I'm in charge, and I've got anything to say around here, any kind of influence at all, you can forget sitting back and enjoying it. Important. I don't want to... Hey, 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 hey. I don't want to... I, I don't want to enjoy myself now. I don't want to sit here and enjoy Villa in the fourth round. I don't want to sit here and enjoy Villa second in the table. I'm not enjoying that. I'm glad they're there. I'm not enjoying that because it only gives me a taste of what they can do, which is grabbing the FA Cup or grabbing the First Division title. Important point about Platt. Must take a break. You keep... Cheerio! Okay.
Okay, right. very, very rude of me there. Before, be very rude of me there. Very rude of me. You were going to make a point, yes. You were trying to make. Uh, you were saying that uh, David Platt was man for man marked, and that's why he wasn't perhaps what he should have been. I have to be honest. If that's right, and if you're trying to tell me that David Platt, a man who we may be basing our World Cup hopes on, can't handle a man to man marking situation. He's not the man for England. Now, I didn't say he couldn't handle man-to-man -man well, marking. you said twice. I said he's got to get used to man-to-man -man marking. Now, he's not been used to it in the past as much as he's he is. He's a professional footballer, for he's goodness not, sake. Hey, 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 if you get into a situation where you're not faced before, you have to adjust to it. Let's hope you can. No, I you, hope no, you can. you react to it. Exactly. Now, he's faced it a couple of games now, really tight marking. I'm sure he'll learn from it. And he'll be more useful to England, but having he, been man-to-man -man marked in the league. Because if he disappears every time he's man-for-man -man marked, he's got, Villa have got problems in the running. He didn't disappear. He, had, he hit the bar I twice. Know, you said he did. No, I didn't say that at all. Somebody said he did. Let's go to Robert. All right, Robert. Villa team's a bit uh, new to me at the moment. And I think they need a touch of class in their team. I think they need somebody like Glenn Oddle. I told you never Good to mention point. that name on this program ever hey, again. Hey, there's a point. There's a thought. Think about it. There's think about Glen Oddle alongside Cowens and and, and that sounds good. He's banned. Roy, hello. Four or double one. Keep calling. If we've cut you off by mistake, please call back. Uh, Graham Taylor, Sir Graham Taylor. Your view of him staying at Villa Park for a long term. BRMB's new what, campaign. Why do you need a campaign? If he wants to, I mean, you, on one hand you're saying Trevor Francis has he snubbed. B City, has he done whatever? But if Sir Graham Taylor left Aston Villa, wouldn't that be snubbing Aston Villa? Why do you need a campaign to keep him? It might help. Are you objecting? Why? Are you objecting to have, a campaign? have a campaign to get Trevor Francis here? No. Well, then there's too late. It's there's all a... gone. It's too late. Well, I don't think there's any difference. If Sir Graham Taylor, whoever he is or whatever he's doing, wants to stay at Villa Park, he will. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't, he'll go. And if he goes, uh, you know, at this critical stage so in Villa's development... Is... Hang on, I'm not finished. If he goes now at Aston Villa's critical stage in, his in the club's development, well, then, he, you know, I would, I would see that almost as big a snub as Trevor Francis. So what you're, you're, you're saying is, stay or go, don't care. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, of course, we want him to stay. He's brought success to Aston Villa. But if he decides to go, because you keep saying he said after four years he's going to go, if he goes now at a very critical stage in Aston Villa's development, then that's a big snub to the club. Let's go to Alan. Hello. Well, um, I'm, on, I'm on Grant Tyler. Yes. I think well, it's up to him if he wants to stay or go. Oh. You're, well, not, you're not too bothered then? Well... I am bothered because I'm tell a him. family self. I'll tell him. I'll say, I'll say the first Villa caller to ring up said he's not too bothered. You can stay or go, Graham. I'll tell him if you like. Oh, you want to tell him that? Hang, hang, hang on, hang on. He didn't say that. That's what he's saying no, to me. No, he's saying to I'm me. Not, I'm, no. I'm interpreting as Phil saying no. to me, what Phil, stay or go. What Phil is probably saying is the same as I pointed out, that he wants Graham Taylor to stop, but if Graham Taylor chooses to go, well, Phil shouldn't lose it. We're not going to beg people to be manager of one of the greatest clubs in the world. Yes. You have to get on your hands and knees and beg Graham Taylor to stay. Yeah, if it takes that, you have to. Why are you proud? Why are you too proud? Don't be proud. Never got anywhere being proud. Go on, Phil. Um, well, if he left the club, it was 21 players who were on quite a lot of money. Yeah. You know, and uh, except 21 players, George, mm. we've had 19 injured all this season. Yeah. Uh, we've only yeah. had two, pl two players who have played all season. Now, to me and to you, that must say yeah. something about no, the training. No, Carl, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying, Carl, and you're, you're thrashing about... Lo and Tom has done the same here, and I've said the same to Tom. Don't ever, don't ever make injuries an excuse for anything. Because if you get in that kind of train of thought, you're lost completely. It's like coming off, as I said before, if you're going to play football tomorrow at any level, on a park's pitch or on Sunday, whenever, don't ever come off the pitch saying the referee cheated us, or the referee was at fault for us losing. Don't ever do that. Even if it's the case, don't ever do that. And, and in the same way, because it just it does you no good, and you, and you don't ever learn, you don't ever move on, you don't ever progress, don't ever make injuries the excuse for anything. It does you no good Why does good it have to be all. an excuse? Why can't it be a good reason? It may be. It may be the reason. 
it may be the reason why you haven't won the cup and the Albion haven't won the, the second division and and, uh, and and the European Cup and everything else. It may You're be the reason. You're saying ignore it. You can't ignore you that. You have to ignore it. How can you ignore it when it's staring in you in the face? You have to put it to one side because a manager is there to get the best out of his squad and injuries will happen. But what about, what, about if, what about if losing a game with the people that are left after the injuries is the best you can Stoop, do? Don't be stupid. You'll never. You you played a bit of football. At, at what do you low, mean? You played some football at a low level. You and even at your level, and even at your level of football, you will know you can never go through a season any club without injuries. Any club, pub Sunday team, never go through a season without it. Now, oh, don't compare if you're going pub to say, football with with the football uh, league for goodness' sake. They have sake. injuries like Albion have injuries, but it's now, not important. One thing you know for a certain fact is that you will not go through a season without an injury. So how can you make it an excuse when it comes up? We're not talking about an injury. You, if We're you're a good manager, you no, plan for it. You won't accept that Brian Talbot had a horrific hey, injury situation. Hey, if Napoleon and Hitler, when they attacked Russia, had planned for one simple fact, i.e. it gets cold and snows in Russia, they'd have been in charge of the world. OK? They didn't. When you're a manager like a general, you plan for simple facts. One fact is simple. In the football league, like the Sunday league, you will get injuries. 0213594011.